Things are starting to get crazy. After Blizzard uncapped Conquest, the floodgates of the Season 4 meta have burst open in a chaotic mess. But that's why we're here! We will be giving you a full rundown of the melee ranged and healer tier lists in Season 4, so stay tuned as we give you what might just be the final meta update in Shadowlands. And just as a reminder, skillcap.com offers a rating gain guarantee while actively using our website. While everyone else is trying to slowly figure everything out themselves, you can jumpstart the process with Skillcap, quickly putting you ahead of the competition. So get ahead of the competition this season and visit the link below for a discount code and start your PvP journey today. Let's kick things off with melee and go over the specs you should keep your eye on. Starting off, we have Feral, which will now be moving up to the S tier. In the past, the individual strength of Feral Druid was a bit more difficult to gauge, since they typically stuck to Jungle Cleave in 3v3. As the expansion has progressed, there has been significantly more experimentation with Feral Druid comps, and we are finally starting to see more comp diversity with setups like Kitty Cleave, Feral SP, and even Feral DK seeing play at the highest end of the ladder. The sheer amount of comps that seem to work with Feral are one of the main factors in its move up our tier list. Like other specs we will mention today, this is due in part to a massive rebalancing act as a result of RMP nerfs at the start of Season 4. Even though Jungle Cleave had a good matchup spread into RMP, it is now in a much better position against the comp, with Holy Priest struggling to have the HPS needed to heal through the cleave. There is a similar story going on with Demon Hunter, who will also be moving up to the S tier. In the past, Demon Hunter struggled a bit into RMP, but more recently, they have made some clear meta adaptations. By playing both Auto Darkness and Auto Blur mechanics, as well as BM Trinket in order to become passively bulky against RMP setups. Another huge part of their success is the fact that Affliction Warlock, Ellie Shaman, and Shadow Priest Caster Cleaves have become far more ubiquitous. Demon Hunters have over 20% passive damage reduction against spell damage, making them really tanky into any wizard matchup. Pair that with reverse magic and the fact that they usually play with the rest of shamans, it's easy to see how Demon Hunter comps have become a living hell for Affliction Warlocks, who can get their entire damage setup reversed with the press of a button. And that brings us to the final class on our list, Rogues. This is where things get a bit tricky. We are keeping Outlaw on the S tier for now, despite some minor nerfs at the start of the season. The nerf to the Shadow Dust Legendary was actually an indirect buff to Outlaw damage, as now most Rogues simply play with more offensive legendaries. As for Assassination, the spec did see a minor nerf to Sepsis, and as we mentioned in our last update, this nerf was simply avoided by going back to Necrolord, which was arguably the better Covenant in the first place. We're moving Asa up from A tier since it is starting to flourish quite well in the Season 4 meta, especially with a comp like RPS, which has seemingly resurrected itself from seasons of dormancy. Subtlety is always difficult to place on tier lists since it's a spec that is more of an accessory to a few other classes rather than being good on its own. But despite nerfs to Holy RMP, Sub is still proving to do okay in the Season 4 meta, and its comp options have expanded to include Thug Cleave, which we will be discussing later. RMP might be weaker, but it is still a massive execution test for any comp on the ladder at any rating, and for that reason alone, we really can't justify moving Sub down even if it is weak by itself. So despite nerfs to every single Rogue spec, they are still holding on or in some cases doing even better than they were last season. And with that, we have a complete picture of the Season 4 melee meta. As you can see, the higher tiers are a bit bloated, but there is a clear distinction between the S and A plus levels. For the most part, everything on the S tier has multiple comp options, and many setups are built around these specs. That is a clear difference from the A plus tier, which includes specs that are a bit more rigid with comp selection. These specs are often complements to other high tiers, and are less potent on their own. Windwalker Monk and Arms Warrior are a bit of a wild card since they are still good, but overshadowed by the upper tiers. Many comps that are played with Fury Warriors can also be played with Arms, but might be tangibly worse into the meta as a whole. In any case, we have moved up Arms Warrior to join Windwalker on the A tier. Next up, let's move on to range DPS, which has seen a radical shift since our last update. In our preseason prediction, we were a bit conservative with Affliction Warlocks. After seeing their slew of damage buffs, we originally thought it might not be enough to elevate them to the S tier since they still struggled defensively. But we have since changed our minds, and we'll be moving them up an entire tier since our original prediction. Let's get one thing straight, their damage is absolutely absurd. Right now, they currently have some of the highest theoretical damage output in the entire game, and if it wasn't for Demon Hunters and Melee Cleaves, they would be one of the most oppressive specs in Arena. But of course, Demon Hunters and Melee Cleaves exist, which are their two primary gatekeepers, since Warlocks are still relatively squishy with limited spell schools and still get hard countered by mechanics like Reverse Magic, which single-handedly denies their main offensive cooldowns. 
Moving on, we have one spec that has seemed to catch everyone by surprise, which is Marksmanship Hunter. Now the patch didn't offer any major tuning to this spec, so why are they suddenly more popular? Well, as we mentioned in previous videos, armor values actually get nerfed at the start of every season because of mythic dungeon balancing of all things. Unfortunately, this armor nerf spills over into PvP, where some classes can have their physical damage reduction nerfed by almost 10%, and it just so happens that Marks Hunters do a lot of physical damage. When you combine that with gear scaling, it's easy to see why Marks has done so well in the early to mid stages of this season, and since it still has access to a top tier comp with Jungle Cleave, we are moving it up to the S tier for now. And if playing the meta isn't your thing, both Thug Cleave and even more obscure setups like Hunter SP seem to be doing okay. And finally, that brings us to Mage, and we're about to say something that might be controversial. For the first time ever in Shadowlands, we are moving Fire down to the A tier. Before you freak out, remember that RMP was and continues to be a meta-defining comp and has been a key driver in dictating the viability of certain specs, especially on the high end of the ladder. Since RMP as a whole received nerfs, Fire Mage by itself has fallen off quite noticeably. And look at the drop-off of representation from their dominance in Season 1 to now. Of course, representation is not class balance, but it should indicate that maybe Fire isn't exactly meta. We're also making the bold decision to take Arcane out of the trash for the meantime. We were unsure whether or not its buffs would actually matter, and it seems like they did, as there are more Arcane mages popping up on the front pages of the arena ladder. Arcane has seemed to found a footing with Outlaw RMD, which sort of complements its dampening-oriented playstyle. Of course, it is not a spec that is going to break the meta, but it definitely has more potential this season. With that said, we have our update to the ranged meta in Season 4. Demo continues to do well, which is ironically a buff to Affliction, since the spec does a good job of continuously killing pets, but keep your eyes on Shadow Priests since we also moved them up a tier. They're currently doing well with a wide variety of setups, but usually including other S tier specs like Feral Druids, Fury Warriors, and Affliction Warlocks, making them a sort of sub rogue of ranged DPS. We've also moved Balanced Druid up a tier. Honestly, this is another one that is a bit difficult to place. Just like Shadow Priest, it can feel more like an accessory in Boomy DH and seems to be getting a bit carried by the individual strength of Demon Hunters and Resto Shamans, giving them really favorable matchups into any Affliction Warlock team. Finally, we have Healers, which is where there has been some major rebalance. First up, Priest. Holy and Disc will be changing spots for this update, as Disc is moving up to the S tier while Holy is falling down to A. The Holy Priest nerf seemed to have hit harder than expected, and came during a time where the meta would become dictated by three things, Warlocks, Demon Hunters, and of course, Melee Cleaves. All three of these things do a lot of damage, and it just so happens that Holy Priest received some timely healing nerfs. The healing toolkit of Holy was simply outpaced by key damage buffs to other classes in Season 4, and when you combine that with a blanket nerf to RMP, it's reasonable to move them down a tier. Disc, on the other hand, was actually starting to see more popularity at the end of Season 3 as players finally started to abuse its toolkit. It is, of course, one of the more aggressive healers, and with overall armor nerfs to everyone in PvP, Disc seems to be doing well with Cleaves, who will be licking their lips at the armor nerfs until it becomes normalized. Disc has really cemented itself as a Cleave healer, especially since it has enough AoE healing and damage reduction mechanics to power through some of the healing intensive brawls that are common in Cleave mirrors. That brings us to Resto Shaman, which is functioning in tandem to Disc Priest. Once again, it is another healer built around aggression. Resto Shamans don't sit in the back line and AFK on healing globals. No, they push in and be as disruptive as possible while supporting their team to land kills. This aggression-based playstyle became much smoother with an unnerfing to their tier set bonus. Now, some of their major totems are able to instantly cast empowered chain heals, which perfectly complements their aggressive playstyle and allows them to actually heal through this AoE damage meta. So with all this together, we are moving up Resto Shamans shamans up to the S tier. And with that, we have our healer meta for Season 4. Resto Druids are arguably the best and most flexible healer right now. Sub RMP was previously a bane to their performance, and now that it's less popular, Druids are starting to flourish. Holy Paladins might actually be the weakest healer in the game, despite their median levels of representation. At the highest end of the ladder, they tend to really struggle since their cooldown management needs to be so precise to overcome specific matchups. All in all though, the healer meta is actually quite good. Every healer is competitive, even to a rank 1 level. Even though healing has been rough this expansion, there is a place for everyone in the meta. But we want to know what you think. How do you think the meta will shape up for the remainder of the season? What changes would you like to see? Let us know in the comments below. 
And if you're wanting to stay ahead of the meta, head over to skillcap.com. There you will find over 600 class guides and a thousand arena commentaries. Together, that's an average of 24 hours of instructional videos per class, and for only $4.99 a month, that is a massive value. If that wasn't enough, we offer money back guarantee if you don't gain at least 250 rating while actively using our website. And with special members only access to our Discord, you can get on demand help from pro players. So, what are you waiting for? Join a community of over half a million lifetime users at skillcap.com. Discount link below. All right, everyone, that wraps it up. Just a reminder, we try and balance the opinions of multiple rank one and professional players when making these tier lists, and that obviously means there's some disagreement. Of course, this is just a prediction, and we will be updating you as things change. In any case, though, we hope you found this as a useful meta guide. As always, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.